Hello everyone, welcome back to the Chinta community. Today we will be talking about a problem that relates mathematics with physics. And of course I'll give you a challenge problem at the end of this video. If you can do the challenge problem, please put it in the comment section. The best commenter as usual will be invited to present in our channel and also there will be some little awards. So make sure to take the challenge problem, okay? So, you know, I was doing this problem in the Physics Olympiad non-routine program and uh, there were many students from middle school. This is a junior program that I'm talking about. And we were talking about equations of motion. Now, some of you already know this. In physics, there are equations which describe the motion of a particle. Now, we were discussing this and then we, the discussion took a surprising turn it became completely mathematical. So we talked about a little mathematical fact that led to the equation of motion. It's almost magical how that happens, how mathematics appears so beautifully in physics. So today we will discuss that. But I want to first talk to you about this guy, Lagrange. You can also Google him. He is a very famous mathematician. He was a very famous mathematician. And one of his seminal work is to put mechanics in the sound mathematical footing. So this is his magnum opus, you can say, Mechanic and Analytic. And this particular book, Lagrange proudly said, does not contain a single diagram. You do not need any physical world motivation to understand the derivations that are there in this particular book. He wanted to put mechanics way the world works around us into pure reasoning in the setting of pure analysis. So you can check this book out. I mentioned him because look at the thing that we will do next. The pure mathematical artifact will appear magically in our physical world. Okay, so uh, the math, let's, look, let's talk about the math first. We have a very beautiful formula for the sum of first n odd numbers. So if you have 1, 3, 5, 7, if you add the first 4 odd numbers, 4 odd numbers, if you add the first 4 odd numbers, the sum will be, the sum will be 4 square, 16. If you add the first 10 odd numbers, the sum will be 10 squared, 100. This is a very well-known formula for from mathematics. But how do you prove it? So there are multiple ways of doing it. You can do it geometrically, which is what we do in the Math Olympiad program. We can also do it using a little trick called the Gauss trick. So this is the challenge one, really. The challenge one. Give me a proof of the fact that sum of n odd numbers, consecutive first n consecutive odd numbers is n squared. So I'll give you a sort of a hint. So you add one, if you want to add 1, 3, 5, and 7, let's suppose this is s, the sum is s, just write it in the opposite order. So this is 7, 5, 3, 1. And notice that each of them, each of the columns add up to the same number 8. You write it in the opposite direction, add up the columns and each of them come up to be 8. This is the hint to solve the first challenge problem which asks you sum of first n odd numbers is n square. Can you do it? If you can, put it in the comment section. Okay. Alright, let's go to the use of this very simple mathematical fact in the world of physics, okay? So, let's draw a one-dimensional system. So, basically a particle. So, I'm just drawing it like a box. It is moving from left to right, from left to right with a unit, with a velocity that is changing, velocity that is changing. So, Let's let's draw it draw it as the time scale. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 
5 and so on it's, this is the time axis and the body is floating from left to right as time increases so in the first zeroth second the body is here the first second the body is here the second second the body is here and so on okay so this is what ha what's happening to the time okay now it's also given that the velocity of the body the initial velocity of the body is zero meter per second it's a zero meter per second okay all right now it's also given that the acceleration acceleration is constant and it is 1 meter per second per second which basically means the velocity increases by 1 meter per second every second every second the velocity increases by 1 meter per second so at the first, at the end of the first second, at the end of the first second, the velocity is one meter per second. It was zero meter per second. At the end of one second, it's one meter per second. At the end of two seconds, it's two meter per second. At the end of three seconds, it's three meter per second and so on. And like this, at the end of t seconds, so this is t minus one, and this is t at the end of t seconds it is t minus t meter per second and the end of t minus one seconds it's t minus one meter per second every second the velocity increases by one meter per second that is the meaning of the phrase acceleration is one meter per second square or acceleration is one meter per second per second okay all right that's great so now what we are going to do is our our goal is to actually find the distance traveled by this particle okay so let's do one thing let's calculate the average velocity average velocity of this object in every interval of time zero to one so what's happening between zero seconds and one seconds remember all of this discussion is happening with middle school students who are in 7th, 8th grade and who have not done calculus. So we have to simplify many things a lot. But the main idea is the same, okay? So just follow with me. So this is, what is the average velocity between 0 and 1 second? Okay, that's final velocity. Average velocity is final velocity, velocity plus initial velocity divided by 2 so here the final velocity is 1 the initial velocity is 0 so 1 plus 0 divided by 2 is half so that is in this time period the velocity is half meter per second the average velocity the average velocity is half meter per second okay what happens in the second interval of time one to two seconds well final velocity is two initial velocity is one so two plus one divided by two that's three by two meter per second in the second second the average velocity is three by two meter per second in the third second the average velocity now you can find it five by two meter per second okay finally in the Tth second between t minus one at second to tth second, the average velocity is t minus one plus t by two, which is two t minus one by two. That is the final value. Okay, so you got the average velocity over each time interval of one second. Now the last thing to find out is the displacement. That is the amount of uh, the, the change in position from the left to right but that would be the distance in this particular case distance traveled by the particle so how do you calculate that where over each interval of time between 0 and 1 you multiply the velocity with the tri time average velocity multiplied by time is the displacement right okay so average velocity 
So displacement is average velocity times time traveled, right? Times the time traveled, okay? So in each case, the time traveled is just one second in each interval, right? So we have we have half times half times one meter, three by two times one meter, five by two times one meter, two t minus one by two times one meter. That's the total displacement over a period of time. Okay. Okay. So now we can just add them up. So one by two plus three by two plus five by two up to 2t two minus 1 by 2. Now you see, almost magically, the sum of the first t odd numbers comes up. So this is the challenge too. Can you simplify this? So if you simplify this, if you just divide by take the LCM of 2 and make sure the numerator is the sum of t odd numbers. So you already know the formula. It's very simple. You just add them up. You'll get the square of whatever. I'm not going to say it. It's very simple. Just go ahead and calculate this and give me the final answer in the comment section. So the sum of odd numbers, the formula that is out there in mathematics, it's very well known. That almost magically comes up while we try to calculate the distance traveled in a t second t seconds with acceleration one meter per second per second and initial velocity zero and this can be actually modified to give you the entire equation for time uh, equation for motion okay so that's the challenge three so in challenge two i said the initial velocity is zero the acceleration is 1 meter per second per second. So A for acceleration, U for initial velocity. And time traveled is T seconds. So this formula will give you the displacement for these values. Now what if you want to generalize it? So challenge 3 is to generalize it. What you do is you take initial velocity as U acceleration as a and time as t okay so with these three values can you deduce using the method that i mentioned in the video can you deduce the general formula in the comment section it's very simple you should be able to do it it's actually quite simple okay so if you are an existing student for a physics olympiad program at chitta make sure to do the end of class quiz and all the three homework quizzes that we post every week because until you, until you do many 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 problems you will probably not get skilled enough for the non-routine physics problems that come up in olympiads or advanced engineering entrances but more importantly you should also look at certain problems like the one that i have done which actually unlocks the relationship between mathematics and physics a bit more you can derive this formula with with some other method methodology and you can do it with calculus etc etc and you, actually you should do with calculus in the long run but this particular method actually opens up another very important aspect in kinematics in the motion in one dimension two dimension and so on study of motion and that is a fundamental principle of how to intuitively understand physical world and physics itself and in particular this sort of problems and what is that principle the principle is this that you chop off a period of time into small slices and you see what is happening in each slice of time that if you do it with any problem in in this sort of problem you will get a much deeper understanding of what's going on okay and it, it, it also actually brings you closer to calculus because calculus actually does exactly what this is and it, it also chops off time one axis into several small intervals 
and, and, and calculates what's happening over that interval. But you have to do infinitely many times. So the good news is if you are thinking like this, in your physics program, if you're thinking like this, then you are secretly introducing calculus and you are able to think the first how the first people who discovered differential calculus thought about this. So instead of mugging up a bunch of formulas from differential calculus, you should use physics to slowly add these ideas that build up to differential calculus. Okay? I think you'll have a lot of fun if you do it in that way. And uh, thank you for watching this video. Please do the challenge problems. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.